Hi everyone, Connor McGovern logging in here, and I'm here with my partners in crime, Noah, Andrew, and we're g the Dream Team is about to analyze a very famous painting, one that's really surrounded by unknown and mystery, and people have been speculating what's going on in this painting, and I think we got this. I really do, and I think. I think you guys are going to be pretty impressed with us, and let's dive into this bad boy. Now, I'm going to start talking about some of the background of the painting, M more specifically the painter, the person who made it. He, uh, his name is Edvard Munch, which is how I think it's pronounced in its native tongue, and he is a Norwegian painter. Um, he has come from a painting background. And he's really known for his symbolism in his paintings. Remember that symbolism. All right. Now, this painting has a ton of symbolism in it. It uses different aspects to really indicate the symbolism of what's going on to help you understand the overall meaning of this painting. Now, the first thing we really noticed is the color scheme. Now, the color scheme is unique because it can go from light to dark very quickly, and it has a unique kind of strands of colors going on around it. Now, the dark colors and a lot of other aspects really help create the mood and the overall tone of this painting and help create kind of anxiety, really. Um, and then not only do the colors but the lines, the lines really help you kind of direct focus on what's going on. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on what's really going on in this painting. And really, and then if you notice kind of there's wavy lines, there's straight lines, and the straight lines do a great job at putting the focus on, and the wavy lines are just in the background there. Now, another thing we really noticed were the shapes. Now, the people are obviously, the main guy has a unique kind of figure, you know, he's got those curves. And that's kind of a really unique shape. And not only that, like if you notice, like there on the background, everything's kind of movie, it's kind of wavy, everything's kind of going on, and then it's also kind of just straight on the pier. Now, to sum this all up, really, the viewer feels an overall sense of mystery, really and anxiety through the, these forms of color, sh lines, and shapes. Now, the thing we're going to talk about first, or I'm going to talk about with you guys, is the color. And I'm pretty excited about this because I love color. Now, the first thing you kind of just notice right off the bat, at least I did, was the background colors. Now, it kind of creates a feeling of that it's about to go nighttime that it's the sunset really and this could be indicating that once nightfall happens something bad is about to happen that stuff is about to go down through this color form and another aspect of color that really helps indicate this also is that the bottom half the bottom third really is dark compared to the top of the painting that has these light orange rays and yellow but on the bottom, it has kind of this dark blue and kind of dark brown. And it's darker than the top half of the painting, which could indicate where this stuff's about to go down with the guy, the guy screaming. And if you also notice in the background, there are these two dark figures. That kind of creates a feeling of unknown, and we all are afraid of what we don't know. And these and also just like, yeah, like I said before, the bottom half is dark. And also the color scheme really is kind of cartoony, if you think about it. It's not like one of these realistic kind of paintings that you're like, man, that looks like real life. This is kind of cartoony, but at the same time, it does an excellent job of still making you fearful of this, this ominous thing in the background that has no physical features, that's just dark, that uses black. Black figures, really. And that really creates the fear in the painting. And the anxiety. Now I'm going to hand this off to my next partner and he's going to be discussing lines so take it away. 
So in the background, the wavy lines are used to convey natural elements in the painting, even though the traditional things in the scene aren't directly defined. With the lines, the viewer can make out um, the sky, the hills, the water, and the shoreline. The straight lines in this painting would strongly suggest the presence of man-made objects, such as the wooden railing and the boardwalk. Even the viewer can make out boats out in the water and in the background, and specifically in regards to the lines that make up the railing, because they are behind the screaming man, it evokes emotions like um, feeling trapped, and because of the angles of the railing and its position to the bottom um, corners of the painting, there are also there's also a feeling of being cornered in, despite the man being in the center of the painting. When the viewer looks at the space between the man and the background, the lines give a smooth transition from the man's head to the background, and if the viewer looks at the background lines overall, the lines that approach the man seem to conform and to the direction of the line of the man, but they become more free and fluid the farther away they get from the man, which then the um, viewer can ask if that is if the man is escaping reality or is reality leaving the man behind. So, overall, like to summarize uh, into the main points. Um, the lines help create an atmosphere of mystery because the straight lines, they box in the man to the center and they like create, they create a feeling of closed in or trappedness um, and perhaps even like claustrophobia, one could argue. Um, and the fluidity of the lines in the background only direct away from the man, so it gives the viewer a sense of isolation and perhaps even a stronger emotion like abandonment. Along with color and line, this painting relies on shape to impart certain feelings and information about the piece. While the scream is comprised mostly of more abstract, wavy lines, there is one very clear delineated shape, the triangle that takes up about a third of the painting in the bottom left-hand corner. Most of the painting relies more on color and lines to convey detail of the setting, which makes the boardwalk triangle such a prominent feature of the scream. Throughout different visual mediums, artists often incorporate triangular shapes and elements into their artwork for a couple of reasons. On a more basic level, the triangle is used like an arrow to identify a point of focus in the piece, which are the mysterious figures that appear to be approaching the main figure. The triangular boardwalk and guardrail also visually trap the main figure in the corner with no means of evading the approaching figures, which is clearly indicated by the look of unease on the figure's face. On a deeper level, artists sometimes use triangles to symbolize power in a piece. In the scream, the ominous figures are at the top of this triangle, which would seem to indicate that they have some authority, and that perhaps they have some power over the main figure. This implication of power adds to the uneasy feeling conveyed, along with the mystery. Who are the background figures? Are they actually approaching the main figure? Do they mean them harm? This is left up for the viewer to decide on their own. Through just the use of one shape, the artist is able to point out an important element of the piece while implying that the subjects are in some way powerful, subtly conveying a sense of uncertainty and apprehension about the identity of the figures, and more broadly, about the painting as a whole. So overall, in conclusion, the different techniques um, of color, line, and shape are used by the painter to convey sort of these feelings of anxiety and misery. 
Um, the colors help you to create the mood of the painting. They give the um, viewer the atmosphere that lays it out for them to begin with. Then the straight lines, um, they highlight focus of the painting and the wavy lines show definitely the natural features in the painting. And before they, the straight lines create like an illusion to box in the man, even though he's like dead center in the painting on the bottom. And the natural lines, they become more free and fluid the farther away they get from the man. Um, also, the different shapes are used to show important parts of the painting. They um, represent different things. They evoke different emotions to the viewer. And so the analyzing visual elements help the viewer understand the overall feeling of this painting, which is really up to debate, but in this instance, um, we argue that it's mostly about misery and um, feelings of uh, like claustrophobia or trappedness or alone.